We asked the White House for a national security guest to address the attacks this morning. They declined, but we are joined by Susan Rice, who served as national security advisor and U.N. ambassador under President Obama. Ambassador Rice, thank you for joining us this morning. To pick up on the president's last tweet right there, how alarmed should we be? Well, George, unfortunately, uh, this is uh, something that the people of the United Kingdom have suffered now uh, three times in the last three months. And it's important to begin by expressing our condolences and to say that our thoughts and prayers go out yet again to the people of London and the United Kingdom. Clearly, the terrorist threat is one we've been dealing with for many, many years, uh, both in Europe and the Middle East and, of course, in the United States. And what is important in these times uh, is to remain unified, uh, to be vigilant, uh, and to recognize that uh, this is a long-term challenge to stamp out the threat of terrorism. We are battling ISIS in uh, Syria and Iraq, uh, al-Qaeda and ISIS in Afghanistan, and we see elements of uh, the terrorist threat in all parts of the world, from Africa to the Middle East to Southeast Asia. We need to remain very focused on dealing with that threat, but at the same time, we need to recognize that there will be homegrown extremists uh, in all of our countries. And uh, there is no easy way to uh, predict and defeat every single one of them. And so uh, we have to strengthen our intelligence, our law enforcement, uh, and uh, work together with critical partners like the United Kingdom. You heard the president say that travel ban would bring an extra level of safety. Your response? Well, George, there's really no evidence to suggest that by banning Muslims or banning Muslims from a particular set of six countries that we would make ourselves here in the United States safer. Uh, and that's, uh, I believe, one of the major reasons why the courts thus far uh, have been very skeptical uh, of the travel ban. Moreover, I think there's a very real risk uh, that by uh, stigmatizing uh, and isolating uh, Muslims from particular countries and, and Muslims in general, that we alienate uh, the very communities here in the United States whose cooperation we most need to detect and prevent uh, these homegrown extremists from being able to carry out attacks. We need the cooperation uh, of our Muslim American communities. We need the cooperation of all Americans. Uh, they need to feel that they are valued and part of this uh, uh, challenge that we face together as a nation. And by stigmatizing uh, a subset of ourselves, uh, or a subset even of foreigners, uh, we make that much more difficult. It's counterproductive. In the wake of the Manchester attack two weeks ago, Britain was very upset with leaks from the American side. The president and his team have been very upset from leaks from the intelligence community generally. How serious a breach is this? How much is it going to hurt cooperation with Great Britain? What can be done about it? Well, these leaks are very concerning. Uh, we are able to work so closely and effectively with partners like the United Kingdom because they trust us and we trust them, and we are able to share, uh, for the most part, without concern that uh, leaks will find their way into the public domain at a time that compromises the progress of an investigation or our shared ability to uh, go after the threat. So this is very concerning. I think Prime Minister May was correct to express her concern to the president. The president uh, was correct to express his outrage at this, and it's incumbent upon uh, the administration as well as our uh, our state and local law enforcement to hold carefully and closely confidential classified information. More broadly on the president's foreign policy, you had a tough critique in the New York Times yesterday. And one of the things you wrote is that Russia has been a big winner under President Trump. How so? Well, George, uh, the United States has uh, been the leader of the world because the world trusts and respects us, because we have an unprecedented network of alliances uh, with close partners that work with us, whether it's to defeat ISIS, uh, whether it's to deal with a threat of an Iranian nuclear weapon, or to go uh, after challenges uh, of a new sort like pandemic uh, disease or, or climate change. We need these partners. And when we alienate our Western allies, uh, in particular when the president went to NATO and failed to reaffirm, as every president has since 1948, that we are committed and remain committed to the defense of our uh, NATO partners, he sent shockwaves through Europe. And that uh, is exactly what Vladimir Putin wants, because Putin's interest, as he actually reaffirmed just on Friday, is to see NATO weakened and ultimately destroyed. And when the United States, the most important player in NATO, cast doubt about our commitment to that vital alliance, 
it undermines our security, it undermines the security of our closest allies, and it's a big win for Vladimir Putin. On Friday, President Putin also continued to deny that his government has interfered in our elections, but he did for the first time say it might have been done by patriotic Russians. Is that as close to an admission of guilt we're going to get from President Putin? I don't know what uh, we'll hear from uh, President Putin, George, uh, but frankly, he's lying. Uh, the reality is, as all uh, of our intelligence agencies have come together to affirm with high confidence, the Russian government uh, at the highest levels was behind the very uh, unprecedented effort to meddle in our 2016 presidential election. And we need to understand exactly uh, how and why that happened and whether or not there's any evidence to suggest that there were those on the American side who facilitated that medal. Well, with the benefit of hindsight, should President Obama and your team done more to blow the whistle on this Russian interference earlier in the campaign? Well, George, we did blow the whistle as soon as we had a unified assessment from the intelligence agencies about uh, the Russian role. And on October 7th, uh, the uh, Director of National Intelligence with the Secretary of Homeland Security put out an unprecedented statement, very, very plain, saying uh, to the American people, this interference is happening, and it's happening uh, at the direction uh, of the highest levels of the Russian government. I think what's unfortunate uh, is that that very important warning got lost uh, in uh, the coverage of uh, other events that, that transpired. It was indeed later the very same day that the Access Hollywood uh, videotape came out, uh, more WikiLeaks uh, uh, came out. And so uh, I think that it didn't get the attention uh, that it deserved. But we worked also very closely with our uh, 50 states to ensure that they were aware of the threat and took all the necessary precautions to protect the integrity of our voting system uh, and our voter registration rolls. So I think we did uh, yeah. what we needed to do. Uh, and I'm, uh, I think it's regrettable that other issues uh, clouded the focus on that very important statement. After the election, the, the President Obama also sanctioned the Russians, took back those compounds in Maryland and Long Island. Some talk now that the State Department of the Trump administration considering reversing that. Good idea? No, George, not a good idea. Uh, let's be clear, Russia uh, is an adversary. Uh, Russia not only has uh, invaded a sovereign country uh, and annexed part of it in, in Ukraine and Crimea, uh, it's not only uh, in cahoots with a regime in Syria that uses chemical weapons, it has interfered directly and deliberately at the direction of the highest levels of its government in our democratic process. That is a threat to the integrity uh, of our democracy. That's a threat to our country on a, a bipartisan basis. And we need to hold Russia accountable. Uh, President Obama rightly imposed strong sanctions in December for the election meddling. Those sanctions should remain because Russia hasn't changed its behavior. It's just denied and obfuscated uh, and continue to behave badly. So there's no reason to ease the sanctions. Indeed, I think as some in Congress have suggested, it's time to, to consider strengthening sanctions. Would it have been appropriate for uh, Gerald, Gerald Kushner to have a back channel during the transition? Your successor, General McMaster, has suggested there's nothing wrong with it. Well, George, I think uh, these reports, uh, if accurate, are, are concerning, uh, not just because uh, of communication between uh, the Trump transition and the Russian government. And we do have communications between transition teams and foreign governments, rarely uh, with adversaries uh, like the Russians and rarely with the frequency that we've seen. But what I found most concerning about that report, which, if true, is that uh, Jared Kushner um, suggested to the Russian ambassador that they communicate using Russian communications in a Russian diplomatic facility to hide their conversation from the United States government. That's extraordinary, uh, if, if not mind-boggling, uh, from the point of view of a national security professional. I've worked in this field for 25 years, uh, and I have never heard of such a thing. The United States, uh, and, and from one administration to the next, has one government, one president at a time. And we worked very hard to do a, a professional and effective handoff, a seamless one. We work very hard in this transition to accomplish that uh, and to do so transparently. And that's the hallmark of what makes our democratic system resilient 
uh, and uh, our ability to endure uh, as, as a leader uh, and a democratic icon for the world. Finally, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Devin Nunez, subpoenaed the CIA, NSA, and the FBI for any information they had about a request you may have made to, quote, unmask U.S. In individuals in intelligence reports. Do you have any uh, objection to having these agencies comply with the subpoena? And what will the committee learn if they do? I don't have, of course, any objection to uh, the agencies being responsive to congressional oversight. Uh, that's what they uh, are expected to do. And this, I think, is a, a question now between the House uh, Intelligence Committee and the agencies. I think what is unfortunate is that it appears that this request, or this subpoena, rather, was issued uh, on a unilateral basis uh, by the chairman, not on a bipartisan basis. And I think, George, at, at this stage, uh, with our democracy being challenged and threatened directly, by a foreign adversary, it points up the, the critical importance, now more than ever, of our working on a bipartisan basis and our protecting and advancing our national security interests on a bipartisan basis. So I hope that going forward that can be the case. And you're confident those documents won't show that you did anything wrong? I'm confident that those documents will show that uh, I, like uh, national security advisors before me, uh, and other senior officials in positions of responsibility, whether at the State Department, Defense Department, or the intelligence community, were doing what we needed to do to do our jobs, which is to protect the American people, to protect classified information, to protect civil liberties. That's what those documents will show. Ambassador Rice, thanks for your time this morning. Good to be with you, George.